praise the Lord everyone and thank you for joining me for an episode of God Speak. So today I want to talk to you guys in regards to um, the Lord telling me about the body of Christ being one. Um, happy Thursday. I hope everyone's morning is off to a great start. And as always, let's get started with a prayer. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. We bless you and we praise you, God. We ask, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer, Lord. I bless you and I praise you, Lord. I pray, God, that I be empty out, Lord, so that you can fill me afresh, Lord. I pray, God, that we will not just hear these words, but we will make sure that we not only do them, but, Lord, that we be examples by action and by words. So, Lord, I just pray that you would move by your strength and your power. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. So what he was talking to me about was the oneness within the body of Christ. And um, anyone who knows me knows I'm a foodie. So he used food references to kind of talk to me about it. And one of the things he said is that um, McDonald's knows that their competitors are not Pizza Hut. You know, they know that Wendy's and they know that Burger King are people that are in their realm. And the thing of it is, is that um, you're not worried about what is not going to hurt you. Um, if someone wants a burger, they're not going to go to Donato's or Pizza Hut or um, any of those type of places. They're going to go to another burger place if that's what they want. So that's where their focus is. And he's saying that the body of Christ should not operate like that where we are tearing each other down for membership, where we are tearing each other down out of jealousy, those type of things. It's so important that we watch the spirit of jealousy and we watch the spirit of competition and we watch what we are doing. Is it destructive to the person or to the kingdom is what you have to ask yourself. Now, there are some people that are called to reach people at a certain capacity. There are certain people at certain levels of their walk that they come along the journey and they meet different people depending on where they um where they're at and that's very um that's very key and important to understand that everyone has a demographic that they have to reach so what they may do may be a little unorthodox for something that you would do but at the same token you have to understand that they're called to reach a different um members of the body they're 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 meant to call a different set of believers in so i'll give you an example there are some churches that you know, um, don't believe in certain things um, as far as physical and outer appearances, right? Where there's other churches where they truly adopt that mentality, come as you are. And here's the thing, we don't want people dressing themselves up um, to come to church, but not changing the inside. We want them to come as they are and let the word of God and the love for God, their love for God, become the thing that changed them. Because ultimately when they do it for people, then people will, uh, fail at it because they are trying to please someone else instead of God. And that's a very important thing that we have to make sure that we realize and that we keep in mind is that what we do, we do unto the Lord and change does not come overnight. You know, there are so many people um, that just me and my own personal walk and, and, and evangelize and say, I don't have um, things to, I don't have anything to wear. Um, well, I go to a church that adopts the mentality, as the scripture says, come as you are. And again, there are, there are people who um, I've seen, um, not because someone told them or tapped them on the shoulder, begin to change their appearance because they want to walk in a way that's going to be beneficial for the body of Christ and going back to the oneness we are called to be one you know no matter what church you go to it shouldn't be my church his church her church they're all God's churches if they are built on the rock if they are serving the Lord fully in all capacity then they belong to the Lord and it shouldn't be this competition thing. Um, oh, well, you know, I don't trust this person's anointing or um, I don't fellowship with that church, this, that, and the third. Now, there's a difference if someone asks you your personal opinion, but do not tear down your brothers and your sisters in Christ because at the bars, they're not even doing that. At the clubs, they're not even doing that. At the bowling alleys, they're not even doing that. So why are people in the body of Christ doing it when we're supposed to be made one and we're supposed to be whole? Our sharpens aren't in every 
joint supply a need. So yes, they may um, have a lot of worship going on and, and, and they may not read as much as your church read the word of God. It's just that there are different levels. People come from different backgrounds, different places. We're different because God has given us a unique fingerprint. He has given us a unique identity. And because of that, this church over here, this 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 Baptist church may be meant to reach this demographic of people, this Pentecostal church over there, but it should be one body. It should be holy and truly one whole body that serves the Lord and serve them in unity and supply their needs. And that is so important right now because so many people, um, you know, one of the, you know, I heard someone say once one of the most unforgiving places is the body of Christ, not the body of Christ, but church and buildings and, and people. Um, and we have to be careful that we do not, uh, walk in that same doctrine that we know that hey i don't know what god told them to do you know like give an example in the book of matthew he told the disciple to go down to the to to the uh water and get the money out of the fish's belly we would swear up and down today that was witchcraft you have to be careful what thus says the lord and what the lord has not spoken so it works both ways you can't say what he did not say but you if you don't know that he did not say you cannot say that it's not him so many people call things witchcraft that are not witchcraft some people don't believe in speaking in tongues some people don't believe in the holy spirit there's so many aspects but if you go back and read it and sometimes you have to go back and read it as a child and you'll discover things that you did not know before. You'll discover things that you even maybe preached or were taught differently, but you have to be open to receive and hear from the word of God. So I just want to encourage you that even if you see someone saying, oh, well, they church do this or they pastor used to do that. The, one thing's for sure. If you go into any church, if you go into any congregation, if you meet any man or woman of God, they will fail you in some capacity because they're human. They're human. Yes, they are of the spirit. Yes, they walk by the spirit. Yes, they're supposed to be in this world, but uh, transformed by the renewing of their mind. But at the end of the day, they're human. Um, Paul said that he had a thorn um, in his flesh and, and, and depending on what translation you, you read and it says that you know he asked the Lord to take it away some things people are going to struggle with because no one is made perfect until God bring them to that place of completion so you're going to find flaws in the person the thing is what are you going to do with those flaws are you going to stand with Satan and continue to accuse this person or are you going to put some prayer on the situation you know there's so many things that we can get offended by things that we shouldn't even get offended by sometimes people can un uh, offend you unintentionally but we have to make sure that we remember that we are one body and if we are fighting against each other and then we have an adversary fighting against us that gives him an upper hand because we are not united anything um that we do in unity will prevail it says the gates of hell shall not prevail against us but we cannot stand with the gates of hell when it comes to accusations against our brothers or sisters in christ even if they are true we have to forgive if you want to be forgiven for all the rotten and wrong things you've done in your life the things in your closet the things under your basement steps all of those things then you have to be willing to allow someone else to be forgiven for the things that they have done wrong even if yours was 16 years ago and theirs is today it does not matter forgiveness is still forgiveness and God granted to those who ask so I just pray that we not be judgmental that we not tear each other down that we not come up against different bodies of uh faith um different denominations but that we will stand in unity and wholeness and that we will aim to show others through our walk through bearing the fruits of the spirit love joy peace kindness gentleness and loss, all of those things that the lord told us to show and to, and to and to possess those are gifts you know um th th they're gifts that we can hold on to that these are things that come with having his spirit but we cannot show those things that are missing mentioned in galatians um above it that we shouldn't uh you know uh, uh that we should not have because those are things that we don't want to say that we carry or show that we carry when we say that, that we have the spirit of god in us and this is something that he's just been placing on my heart a lot that i see a lot you know my church versus your church and i and i know i've said this in many videos that i've done but i'm going to continue to say it because i feel led to say it evangelism 
is going to the lost. It's not going to someone else's church somewhere someone's planted and pulling them out of their church or trying to say, well, I believe it's time for you to leave. You know, make sure you're led by the spirit when you give prophetic words because you can alter someone's life. You can alter someone's destiny and ultimately you can alter the body of Christ because if that person isn't where they're supposed to be and every joint supply need, then that means something is not being upheld. So I just pray that you know, if you see someone doing these things, that you would just remind them and encourage them, hey, I'm going to trust in the Lord with all that's in me, and I'm going to do my part. So I just pray that you guys be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.